Welcome back to Talk Dead to Me, the podcast that has nothing to do with the show Dead to Me, but we are open to selling it if Netflix comes a knocking. I'm your host, Johnny O'Dell. I'm the social media manager for The Walking Dead. And our guest this week is the talented actress, Alex Scambati, who I pray I am saying the name right. I did not confirm with her. I definitely should have. I'm realizing that now in the moment. Alex, I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong, but Scambati sounds right to me. So I'm just going to I'm just going to roll with that. Most of you know her as Jules from The Walking Dead. She's that Oceanside warrior who occasionally flirts with Dan Fogler's character, Luke. And if you're wondering, Johnny, is she just as delightful as she appears in the show? The answer would be yes. She's a great person, and I'm excited to see where her career goes from here. So without further ado, Alex Scambati. So Alex, we actually have something in common. We both have had spent time on the Craig Ferguson show, which no is the first thing way. that pops up when you YouTube you, by the way. <laughs> and my mom, actually. Yeah, I know. I saw that. That was amazing. So how did yeah. that come to be, first of all? Pure luck. Like, it's so funny because I feel that I, in moments of wanting to quit acting, it's happened twice where I've wanted to quit acting and then something kind of miraculous happens. Mm. So I was in college and I was like considering giving it a break until I graduated. And my mom loves Craig Ferguson. And she was like, Hey, I'm coming to LA. The one thing I want to do while I'm out there is go see a show. I was like, all right, whatever. So, um, I didn't put any makeup on. I just grabbed the first thing in the closet, didn't do my hair. And then we happened to sit in what he called lesbian row, which is just oh, yeah. the front with a bunch of women. And he came out for his monologue and he was like, Hi. He like did a double take and he was like, Hey, do you want to be on the show tonight? And I was like, oh. <laughs> what? Um, and yeah, so he had me do the monologue and the cold open or no, the cold open and like a couple other segments. And then he just kept inviting me back because he's a good dude. Uh, in 2012, I was a CBS page. So I think it was just right after that time. Oh, yeah. So that was like my first job out here. I came from South Carolina and it was just straight out of college. And that was like the first job. It was Crazy. So I know all about Lesbian Row. I know all about picking people of where they go in the audience and stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. You made all um, the Starbucks runs to the Grove. and Yes. Oh, my oh God. My the Grove. It's just, yeah, it's <laughs> hectic. And then my favorite part was after The Price is Right, where everyone yeah. on there is like squeaky clean. Like, And then the announcer, I can't remember his name, where he's like, hey, Drew, how's it going? Um, Shadow, that guy. I think? Yeah, something like that. Shadow. <laughs> He like had a completely different personality because sometimes we go to the restaurant, that like barbecue restaurant afterwards, and he's like wearing like a black leather studded jacket. Oh yeah, and like a baller. He has the whole all the models like around him, like Hugh Hefner, and I'm just like, and he's like, "Hey babe, get me a refill," and I'm like, "What the?" F-? <laughs> I, was, I was like, "Show this is like a like a rude awakening to show business." But yeah, no, I guy. saw him at a restaurant once, and he was doing exactly the what you're talking about. I was like, like dude, how do you have so much attention? I don't understand. Yeah. All right. So there's not a ton of information on your background online. There's some stuff on mm-hmm. IMDb, but I don't know if it's to be trusted. I know in your Craig Ferguson appearance, you said you grew up in North Carolina. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. I okay. grew up in North Carolina. I'm actually here right now. Um, so oh. yeah, it's so nice to be home. That's like the biggest blessing of quarantine has been chilling with my parents, honestly. Yeah. I'm a pup. That's nice. It's been really cool. Um, yeah, so I was born in New York, and then I was raised between North Carolina, and then I lived in San Francisco for like a little bit. Wow. All right. So when did you start getting interested in acting? I am a product of the Wake County Public School System, which I'm super grateful for. So when mm. I was seven years old, I had this amazing drama teacher named Heather Connolly, now Heather Weaver, um, mm. and she got me so excited in elementary school, Wednesdays, we would have drama class. And she was so free and she was so fun and it was so electric. And I was like, this is, this is it. Um, yeah. And thankfully it was an arts program, all elementary through high school. So we kind of, it was just kind of built into everything that we did. So it started That's there. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So um, are you doing a lot of plays or musical theater or things like that? Growing up, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. Total nerd, like, I mean, I went to the kind of school where we would sing Wicked in the hallways. Like, you didn't go to the football <laughs> games. You went to the chorus concerts. You went to the orchestra performances. Like, just a very different American high school experience. But, yeah, lots of musicals, lots of plays. I'm a theater nut. That's, that's my favorite thing. Is going to that's see amazing. Theater. 
Now, I'm afraid to ask because I don't know if it's true or not, but I also saw that you are a descendant of a famous composer. Is that true? Oh, or yeah. did someone make that up? No, that's true. Yeah, distantly true. related to, yeah. His name was Giovanni Scambati. Um, yeah. And I don't know how many generations it goes back, but I suppose I've heard from family members that were related to him, so I'll take it. When do you go to San Francisco? Do you go to college first or? I was there when I was a kid. Um, and then I go back to visit as often as I can. I was there from like four to eight, but I remember gotcha. it vividly. Like mm -hmm. I, I absolutely love living there. I remember we would go, like we lived in a town called Danville, but we would mm -hmm. go to Sonoma. We would go into the city of San Francisco. And I just remember it being this like electric artist's haven because it was the nineties in San Francisco. It was before what we have now is the real tech. I mean, we had the internet, right? I think back then uh, it wasn't super yeah. popular yet, but we didn't have Silicon Valley the way that we have now. And so it had a little bit more of its, the beating heart of San Francisco. Back gotcha. Then. So yeah. did your family support your decision to go into acting? My dad has always been extremely supportive. He's just, he's the kind of guy who's like, whatever you do in life, I support you. I only ask that you work your ass off. Aww. And so yeah, he's, he's very supportive. My mom also supportive, but um, was super nervous for me because acting is not the most stable career. And I think it's also something about coming from, my mom emigrated here when she was young. I think it's something also about coming from an immigrant family where they want you to find stability. Mm -hmm. So the idea sure. of doing something that wasn't super sure, something where fiscally it wouldn't necessarily always be responsible made her a little bit nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, but I liked having both of them, the supporter and then my mom, who supports me personally and now supports my career, but that I could rebel against at the time and be like, no, this is what I want to do, mom. This is my identity. So yeah, I, I'm actually grateful to both of them for different reasons. Wow. So you said uh, via Craig Ferguson, you kind of had your ups and downs with like being an actor and if you should quit mm -hmm. or not. Like, was there anything else that kept inspiring you to stay at it? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've never had, thank goodness, a negative experience working on set. And I think I always meet these really incredible people when I do get to work and that keeps me motivated. I also think that the work itself is so exciting. For me, it's a touchstone to always come back to my breath, my body, being in the present moment, being curious. Like I always have these opportunities to learn about different people, learn different skills for The Walking Dead. I'm doing like weapons training. I mean, there's always something to kind of feed your curiosity. So I think that part of me that never is quite satiated really is inspired by acting. So that's probably, those are the two things, the people and then my curiosity. So before Walking Dead, what were the projects uh, that sort of made you think like, okay, I'm doing this. This is, this is happening. I'm like, I'm on the right path. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, again, I think it's more the people that I've worked with. So I worked, the other time I was thinking about quitting acting, I booked a show called Red Band Society that was on Fox mm. at the time. And um, the director of my episode, this man, Jason Ensler, the scene was, I was playing like a seductress and mm -hmm. it's always kind of weird in the situations, especially as a feminist. I want to make sure that things are portrayed in a way that doesn't take anything away from women. And I felt so empowered in that moment um, and, and shooting that episode because of his like protecting my safety because of his encouragement. So that was great. I'm trying to think of, I mean, Craig Ferguson was incredible because it came out of nowhere and he's such yeah. a good guy. And I was like, it was just like a kind of a magical coincidence. Eventually you became like an intern. Were you, an, were you ever an intern or was oh, that yeah. just like a, oh really? Oh yeah, no, happened. I was a proper, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Bridger Weingar and I were not, I don't know if that's how you say his last name. Um, Bridger and I were not romantically involved. Uh, so yeah, that part wasn't I could tell. true. Yeah, <laughs> that was something that Craig was trying to push as a storyline. Um, but yeah, we, I was an intern. Oh, how long full did that fledged, last? Fetching, I think six months. Was Craig a good boss to work with? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's very different from his on-screen persona. He's very mellow. He's really mm. calm. He's like really, I mean, you've worked with him, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, he's, he's really laid back. Yeah, and he's like totally aware of 
what his show is, who likes yeah. it, who doesn't yeah. like it, and where it fits in. It's so yeah. interesting they went with Corden. I mean, definitely a risk, totally but like he's a different guy. Someone who you could actually market to YouTube because Craig was great, but yeah. none of his bits ever made it really viral or anything. It was just its own self-contained world, which I kind of yeah. loved about it, honestly. It was, I think it was a cult favorite. Like yeah. it's one of those things that like the people who love it, love it intensely, but it doesn't have that marketability that someone like James Corden has. So you're looking through your Instagram, uh, which by the way, has an amazing aesthetic. I love the white borders. That's, oh, I thanks. tried to do that with Walking Dead, but we have so much weird content. It just, it, you know, I couldn't really sustain it, but no, great you aesthetic. do a great job. Thank you so much. And then on Twitter, you can see that you're like really progressive. And I'm wondering, like, mm. did you grow up? Were your parents progressive? Or is that something you developed just kind of like through school or friends? I don't know where that started. Um, my parents are, I wouldn't say that they're progressive. I kind of popped out a feminist. Like it was just <laughs> day one on the docket. I don't know what inspired that. Sure. Um, I remember, and this, this isn't necessarily like a feminist conversation, but I remember when I was like, five years old, I had a conversation with my uncle George who races motorcycles. Mm. And uh, he was, I was arguing with him that I thought that Mia Hamm could run faster than his motorcycles. So that just was kind of like something, I don't know, that was always in me. Um, I think it's also, I was a product of the school system that I grew up in, mm -hmm. which has produced like most of my best friends that came out of the, that school system are now social workers. Um, mm. shout out to social workers, they're shout superheroes, yeah. uh, librarians, you know, working for the government, working for NGOs. Like, I just think that growing up in the Wake County public school system, going to a magnet school, um, I had access to so much information that I might not have. So let's get to Walking Dead. Um, yeah. how does that opportunity come about? I have auditioned for the Walking Dead probably 10 times. No way. Over the past 10 seasons. <laughs> yeah. So the entire run. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I would get like personal requests from, I don't know if he remembers this. Sorry, Scott Gimple. But I would get like requests through my agent from him to audition for the show. And I just never booked it. So it came through, it came through my agents in North Carolina. Um, the wonderful Finn Cannons who do local casting. Shout out. In Georgia. Yeah, absolutely love them. Um, yeah, they're fantastic. So I got the audition through them and I saw the breakdown for Jules and something kind of clicked when I saw the breakdown. I was like, oh, this is, this is the one that I booked for sure. Like this is the, I've earned this one. She's so fun. Yeah. I knew that this would be the, the time that I actually ended up booking it. Yeah. Do you know what the other characters you could have been were? Cause I know a lot of times they do fake yeah. sides. Oh no, it's always fake sides. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've, I think I've only ever gotten dummy sides. I auditioned for Gamma's little sister. Oh, okay. And I may have auditioned for Gamma as well, but not that Whoa. like, yeah, I don't remember for sure, but I definitely auditioned for her younger sister. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I feel like you could have done Laura. I could see that. Uh, oh yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so you, you finally get this, you know, this is, this is it. And mm -hmm. what is it like to actually find out that you booked it? <laughs> I think I just started I like breathed a sigh of relief because it was something that was on my bucket list I was like I have to book this goddamn show I have to do it I have to work on this they've auditioned for it so many times I have to book it so yeah. there was a sigh of relief and then just excitement because it really felt like the right time mm -hmm. and I'm so excited to have come on with the cast that we have right now I do think that things happen in the right time and I love the people that I work with so much. And some of them weren't even working a couple seasons ago. So if I had booked it or like our storylines wouldn't have, you know, intersected. Um, so yeah, all that. What's it like? <laughs> I lost uh, my train of thought. <laughs> no, that's great. What, what was it like acting alongside uh, Dan Fogler? He's so goofy. I love Dan. Like the moment that we met, we really clicked because we can meet on this. I hope he doesn't mind my saying this. I'm like putting everyone on blast today. Um, we can meet on this very witchy spiritual level. Um, so I think that we connected very quickly and he's such a goob and he's so free as an actor. Like he's so fun. He's always trying different things. He's always making me laugh. So personally, and then also in work, I think he's fabulous. Yeah, you guys have excellent chemistry. It was nice to Thanks. see a fresh face. And they didn't do anything with Luke in the comics. He's just, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. 
but so it's good to see his story fleshed out and actually see Oceanside fleshed out. That's just, they're like, oh yeah, there's a community called Oceanside. Anyway, and yeah. that's it. So <laughs> did you- I think it's probably a testament to Dan just being an awesome actor and then wanting to keep him on the show. That's my guess. What's it been like to go through this hiatus now? Like you guys, the finale is supposed to air in April and now yeah. everything's changed. I'm, I'm so excited for that finale. So I feel like I've, again, just been holding my breath for a while, wanting it to air. And also just missing my friends. Like I really would love to go back to the show so I could hang out with Gustavo and Avi and Ross and like all of these wonderful people. Um, it feels like a summer vacation that's gone on a little too long and I'd like to go back to school. Where were you when you found out that the show was ending? I think I was, it was, it was what, like a week ago? Maybe a little bit less? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I was in Georgia because I was just in Georgia filming a movie um, oh. and I, yeah, and I got the news and I was like, oh my God, yeah. because you hate to see things that you love come to an end, but we also have so much time to flesh out like in the end of season 10 and then with the, what, 22 episodes of season 11? 24. 24. Yeah. Oh no, that makes so much more sense. Of course it's 24. Yeah. 24 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> this is television. Um, yeah, the 24 episodes of season 11. We have so much time to pick that up. And then there are going to be spinoffs and like the Carol Daryl storyline will continue. So I was sad, but I was also excited to see like Carol and Daryl are two of my favorites. So I'm yeah. glad that they're going to get their own show. Yeah, totally. I wish they had waited on that announcement because I've seen mm. the finale and there's a lot of high stakes for Carol um, yeah. and Daryl, but especially Carol. But knowing the yeah. news, you're just like, okay, well, so she's fine. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're like, oh, well. I guess she lives. Well, or, I you know, you never know. They could do like, a, I don't know, Gimple was talking about doing like an anthology series. So maybe something happens to Carol and Daryl and we go back and explore their past. I don't know if that really works. Yeah. We've kind of explored their past a lot on the show, haven't we? But who knows? Who knows? I leave it in who the knows? hands of Angela Kang. She's very capable and a genius. Yeah. So we'll let she her is. decide. Yeah, and I'm excited she's show running the Daryl Carroll thing as well. Um, have you watched the all of The Walking Dead? So I have gone back and watched seasons one, two, nine, and 10 during quarantine. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Netflix yeah. is awesome like that. I know. Um, I know. I was just wow. glued to, to my computer for, so I know I'm going to go back in and like flesh everything else out, but I knew I had to get the start of the world, the base, and then I had to get what leads us into where we are now. And now yeah. I'm going to go back and so kind of like jumping between <laughs> storylines, but I'll get there. What blows my mind is like Daryl's kind of like, you know, the one of the icons of the show now and like, you know, for some women like a sex icon, but he has not <laughs> gotten laid in 10 years. Not yeah. Norman, but you know, Daryl. How is that possible? Oh gosh. I mean, I think it's a testament to the fact that, and I know I think you've discussed this on other episodes of the podcast, but like he has an ability to be friends with women, which I really value in him and makes him more attractive as a character to me. The fact yeah. that like he can be friends with that with women and not have to have a romantic relationship but i do think he gets lonely with dog out in the woods and i do wish that he you know that he had yeah. somebody to call home you know what i mean right he's a lone wolf usually he is i guess this would probably spoil your you know character in the finale but you're you know are you coming back for like 11 right lord knows lord no I oh have you not heard idea no, they, I mean, rightfully so, they keep us in the dark for the most part. Like, I, did, mm -hmm. I, had, to, I had to sneak a copy of the season finale script to read oh. it to figure out what was happening. Um, I won't say who gave it to me. That person will remain anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Fogler? Uh, no, I'm kidding. No, never Dan Fogler. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they keep me, they keep me in the dark. Um, but I think that there's also a huge risk of people spoiling things so I can understand on such a big show why that's important so i have no idea but i would love to find out and i hope that i find out soon yeah you get yeah. a whole jewel spinoff i mean we don't we have no idea who knows she's a crazy you, lady i can see it i know we don't know too much about her yet have you kind of built up a backstory in your head yeah yeah i have um and i think that you see some of what i intuited about who she would become in the season finale she's definitely someone who and again, if this spoils anything, I'll try and keep it big. Um, <laughs> she is the protector in her relationship with Dan or with, uh, mm. with Luke. So I can see, I think that she's a badass. Like, I think that she's flirtatious and gregarious and has a huge heart and that she's also 
the first person to pick up a bow and arrow and defend the people that she loves. All right. I like that. Yeah. She's, got, I, she's got some Katniss vibes, but like a little bit more. She offensive. does. Right? Yeah. 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 So um, outside of being with your parents, have you picked up any quarantine hobbies? Ooh, that's a good question. I think I was really hot to pick up hobbies at the beginning of quarantine. I was like, okay, because I'm someone, and all of my family, all scan bodies are very mm, active. We like to pick up, like I was telling you before, super curious. I want to learn how to garden. I want to learn how to speak Greek. I want to learn how to like modern dance. I want to do all these things. So at the beginning of quarantine, I think I was really rushing to do all of those things. And I did garden and I did um, pick up some more Greek. My mom is Greek. Um, mm -hmm. And I, you know, all these things. But I think that the thing that's been most beneficial to me during quarantine has been allowing myself some downtime, which I never usually allow myself. Mm -hmm. um, and also I've been reading a lot of poetry. Really? Just, yeah, it's my absolute favorite thing to do. I just go in my backyard and uh, I read poetry. Without some Shel Silverstein and- Yeah, <laughs> just love Shel Silverstein, absolutely. How could you not? How could you not? No, I love yeah. it. It's, uh, it's the most calming thing for me. And I think it's got something to do with rhythm and rhyme and um, having my feet on the earth. Like that combination is, is really healing. So I've been doing a lot yeah. of that. <laughs> um, yeah, this pandemic's really strange. Uh, today, actually, I'm going on my first socially distanced date with someone oh. I met on Bumble. And I'm slightly terrified, but also relieved because, because it's social distance, I don't have to worry about okay, like, can I hug, what do you hold hands, anything? Like, yeah. that's all out of the question. I could just get to be 10 feet apart and we'll see what happens. Maybe it's a train wreck. Maybe it's great. I don't know. Wow, that's wild. It is wild. I mean, and I, I actually, kind of want to, <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. We, we did a FaceTime date like two weeks ago, which was interesting. Oh. It's weird, man. It's so weird. I feel like I'm so much more comfortable. I don't know how, if this is the same for you, but I feel like I'm so much more comfortable in person and the idea of a FaceTime yes. date is nerve wracking. And texting too. It's just like, oh yeah, not, it's stressful. Oh no, impossible. it's like, it's like, you know, the, it's what we were playing with before, but intensified because you don't get to have the human interaction. Like mm -hmm. so much of who you are, you can express through text. Yeah. Um, because it stayed, because it, it just lives and isn't fluid and flexible and all those kinds of things. So yeah. good luck. Thanks. Yeah. It's, I'm trying to appreciate the historical context of this because this is a time yeah. that if we actually survive all of this shit, um, that you know, kids, grandkids, or someone else's grandkids will be like, wait, you were alive during COVID? I'm like, yeah. yeah. What was it like? It was fucking crazy. Yeah, like, it, was, it was wild. Yeah. <laughs> Every I, day. Your Twitter says you're a fire sign poster child. Can you <laughs> dive into that a little bit? Sure. Um, so this gets back to the the witchiness that i was talking about before but um are you a witch can, yes <laughs> okay got definitely it. Yeah. absolutely okay. cool. um Good i'm sure know. people roll their eyes at this and i i personally just consider that like a very subtle form of misogyny but um hmm. i am a sagittarius um Same. and i have oh are you really yeah oh nice. december there you go what's your birthday uh december 16th i'm the 18th Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. All right. Sorry, um, go on. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> so as you know, Sagittarius, all of the fire. Um, and then my rising sign is Aries. And mm. I'm half Greek, half Italian. So I think that pretty much everything, <laughs> everything about my family background, everything about my astrological chart has to do with fire. And I think it comes into the things that I'm passionate about and the ways that I show up in the world. I'm pretty, I'm a pretty fiery wow. person. Really that's great what is it like being an actor like in this quarantine right now like i i heard there's a lot of zoom auditions happening have you been yeah. you been doing any of that yeah i had my first zoom call back the other day which was frankly Congrats. really weird thank you yeah it was um it was nice to have a call back and it was also very strange to do it via zoom because there's so much technical stuff mm -hmm. like um i also am producing a short film and i had to do i had to run my own adr so oh, I was wow. both, yeah, as like a producer, actor, and sound engineer, basically like recording myself, watching playback, trying to get into the scene and the character, cutting myself. It was, it was a, wow. it was a cluster, yeah. um, <laughs> but I finished it. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been really interesting. Like some auditions have come through. I'm grateful when self tapes come through. I think that they're so much easier than Zoom 
auditions. That um, sounds awful. Yeah. Something about doing auditions in my home is just weird. Yeah. It's just weird. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's happened a few times. It's happened a really? few times. Yeah. Wow. How mm -hmm. did Skype blow this, by the way? Like they totally Ooh, blew so it. Hard. I blew know. It. I see it sometimes. Like you'll see like a Good Morning America interview and it's mm -hmm. shitty. And then you got the Skype logo <laughs> in the bottom. But like Skype had like a 10 year lead. Zoom just comes out of fucking nowhere and just and takes was, over the world. There was no question about it either. Like I feel like the moment the quarantine started, the moment that this pandemic started, everyone was like, all right, so it's Zoom. Yeah. There wasn't Can even you, like an, an option. It was like Skype. No, we forgot about that. We're just doing Zoom. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. I just hope we're not like inundated with like just constant, you know, quarantine content for the next like four years, you know? Yeah. I hope we can just move past it. I, I think we will. I think we'll blow past it. I think the interesting thing about going from LA and then now being in North Carolina and then working in Georgia is I've gotten a couple of different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the human will to survive is very strong. I think yep. that our desire for comfort and normalcy is very strong. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping that they come up with a vaccine and that people wear their goddamn masks and, Dude. you know, social distance and be a smart person, um, and that we can get over this and that when we do, I think that I hope that we'll return to a sense of normalcy quickly. But when I say normalcy, I don't mean like exactly as we were before. I mean, I'd like to be able to hug my friends, but I also think that all of the things that have been brought up in this time, all the things that have been examined we have to continue to examine those things, right? All of the human rights oh, issues yeah. and you know, all of these things. Um, but I think that we will get back to a place where one will survive as a human race. It's climate change I'm more worried about. Um, sure. And two, I can't see us not wanting community and physical affection and like, you know, the theater and the cinema and the library and like concerts and all of these things that make living worthwhile. I can't say it's going back to never having that again. I feel like this is like a molting year where we're just like mm. excruciatingly growing. Um, yeah, you bring hopefully... to mind the phoenix, which like regrows from its ashes, right? It burns and then <sighs> I it's hope born so. from its ashes. So I really hope if we're gonna molt, it certainly feels like we're all on fire right now, so. Where would you move if you were like, all right, that's it, I'm moving out of this country? I have family in Greece and I have a lot of really incredible friends in France. So yeah. I would probably move to either of those places and just be with people that I love. Alex, it has been such a pleasure talking to you. I'm glad we got to know you better. And I look forward to seeing more jewels in the future. Hopefully, hopefully you get your own spinoff. From your Good lips Dan. to God's Wouldn't that be ears. great? That'd be so great. That'd be so great. All right, I would love but, that. Um, anyway, uh, we'd love to talk in the future, but in the meantime, enjoy your quarantine at home and you know, have a great weekend. You too. Thank you, Johnny. I appreciate it. All right. That was my interview with Alex Scambati. Thank you so much for listening. And also huge thanks to Alex for coming on the pod. It was great talking to her. Didn't I tell you guys, she is a lovely, lovely person. Make sure to check out her clips on Craig Ferguson. They're all on YouTube. We will see you next week. Until then, be safe, wear a mask, and as always, happy birthday. <laughs>